biomass traffic level here in mid. Water cycle. Carbon cycle. Global warming. Eutrophication. Today we're discussing the Florida Short Rivers Community Project. My name is Isha Kandar. My name is Kelsey Workheiser. And we will be discussing abiotic and biotic factors. <laughs> okay, abiotic factors are non-living factors in the ecosystem. Some examples in the Florida Short Rivers Project are sunlight, soil, wind, rain, and temperature. Biotic factors are organisms that affect an ecosystem, and some examples are turtles, skunks, oaks, trees, and snails. Abiotic and biotic factors work together to make an ecosystem healthy and functioning. Hi, I'm Chris Bondarovich. And I'm Matt Fox. Hi. And today we'll be discussing symbiotic relationships. Okay. Symbiotic relationships are cr close relationships between two organisms. Some examples of symbiotic relationships are predation, mutualism, competition, commensalism, and parasitism. An example of predation is when a heron catches a baby alligator snapping turtle. An example of mutualism is when a musk turtle eats snails, increasing the growth rate of grass. Competition is when a gar and herring compete for baby turtles. Commensalism is baby alligator snapping turtles hide in reeds for protection. An example of parasitism is when leeches is attached to alligator snapping turtles. I'm Emily Levitt and Michaela Valley, and we are here to discuss the Florida Short River community food chain. So Emily, what's the primary producer in the food chain? It's actually tapegrass because many other organisms and aquatic animals and mammals feed off of this tapegrass. It's a very important, important thing in this food chain. Um, what eats tapegrass? River turtles, decomposers, and snails and aquatic insects eat tapegrass. Michaela, can you tell me what eats snails and aquatic insects? Because it's a very important thing in this food chain. Oh, snails and aquatic insects are very important as well. Gar eats them, frogs eat them, skunks eat them, um, young turtles eat them, and great blue herons, and many other birds eat them too. Also, what eats algae? Because it's very important, it's a very important fungi in this, and many organisms eat it. Yes, algae is also a primary producer. Musk turtles eat algae, the gar eats algae as well, the frogs eat algae, and so do snails and aquatic insects. So there you have it, the food chain of the Florida Short River community. Yep. See you next time. Yeah. Back. I'm Isabel Zakaria. And I'm Kelly Hopkins. And we are discussing Florida Short River's trophic levels and biomass. Uh, on our biomass pyramids, it, uh, we discuss the biomass chains, and it goes tape grass, then uh, a level of snails and aquatic insects, and then a level of young turtles, and then alligators at the top. We chose this order because at the bottom, tape grass has a very large population and mass, and as the chain ascends, each level has a slightly less population than the level below it. The biomass is smaller at the top because there isn't enough energy to sustain bigger animals. Because of the increasing amount of mass, it, the levels will go down, but because a single organism from the top layer has more mass, and the single organism from the bottom layer has little mass, it seems like the pyramid should be backwards, but because of this, they actually have more energy in the bottom part because of the increased population. Thanks for watching. In biogeochemical cycles, nutrients move from biotic factors to abiotic factors using the one-way flow of energy. Carbon, which is like a main nutrition in all these things, cycles through the biosphere. Um, as an individual burns fossil fuels in forests, they release carbon into the atmosphere. And they also deposit carbon into the atmosphere using volcanoes. Even though there aren't any volcanoes in Florida Short Hills, the carbon is still in the air from the volcanoes that are across the area. And then tapegrass and other producers use atmospheric carbon during photosynthesis. Consumers, such as the snails, aquatic insects, worms, and whatnot, 
Use this oxygen release carbon dioxide in the aerobic cellular respiration. Herbivores, carnivores, and armivores devour plants and or other animals to obtain glucose and use in cellular respiration. Numerous sea creatures and land creatures combine oxygen and calcium with carbon to create their carbon concentrate cells. And underwater producers like green algae receive dissolved carbon dioxide from falling rain and create oxygen for garfish and, and lots of other things. Using their gills, consumers exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide dissolves in the water around them and creates a whole returning to the atmosphere thing going. And then, as creatures die of illness, accidents, old age, or predation, their bodies become substitutes for decomposers. Decomposers return the biotic matter back to abiotic matter and release carbon into the air. Biological forces transition into geological forces as decomposer pressure, heat, alter organic matter into fossil fuels. Sediment with accumulated carbon turns into rocks, and the carbon dioxide goes back into the atmosphere <laughs> with the assistance of volcanoes and humans. Various human life forms in Florida short hills and other areas rely on carbon to thrive, so the carbon cycle is greatly important. Proteins, carbohydrates, lipids that build up organisms' tissue contain carbon from the cycle. Photosynthesis performed by audiotropes use the carbon and create oxygen for consumers like stated before, and that's basically the whole cycle between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, which keeps everything alive and living. And without the carbon to cycle distributing this essential element, life would really cease to exist. The nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, and water cycle interacts with the carbon cycle, supplying the necessary supplement for the biotic organism. Nitrogen allows primary producers to make amino acids, then build nucleic acids, and form DNA, RNA, and proteins. As consumers devour these producers, they take in their nitrogen products and use them to make their own. This keeps them alive so they can do cellular respiration and release carbon. And when organisms die, nitrogen uh, decomposers break down their particular things in the cycle and phosphorus forms rocks, soil minerals, parts of RNA and DNA, it devolves into oceans, and the phosphorus cycle affects this nutrient cycle and moves through the web and permits creatures to exist so they can create more carbon dioxide. One of the most important cycles in life is the water cycle. The water cycle has four parts. Condensation, precipitation, transpiration, and evaporation. Condensation is when water is, starts to accumulate in the atmosphere and then falls down to earth in the form of droplets. After condensation, the water then becomes evaporated back up into the atmosphere when heat causes the water to heat up and then break up into, into the air. But another way it can also get back up into the atmosphere is through transpiration, which is through uh, various plants. Then, once it's back up there, it goes through condensation and then back through precipitation again. Now, the importance of the water cycle is that it re keeps recycling the water for plants and animals to use. When the importance of water in plants is that it keeps them able to perform photosynthesis, which keeps them alive by creating energy. Uh, this is similar to the other cycles because and they interact because in between the cycles, the, when the water precipitates, it brings down nitrogen, carbon, and other important elements down with it. Yes. Tonight's top story is eutrophication in the Florida Short River system. But first, a message from Robbie. It's 10.45 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Thank you, Robbie. Now, back to the issue. Uh, eutrophication is a serious issue in the Florida Short River system. It's when there's an excess of nutrients on the top of the surface of the water, causing algae and other fungi to reproduce at an alarming rate, causing to create a cover on top of the water. Eutrophication seems to be quite the issue, Bob. Yeah, the cause of it is uh, excess nutrients coming into the system from things like fertilizer and other things like that. Uh, yeah, so it's a really big issue. What are some of the environmental impacts, Bob? Uh, an impact of that is uh, intense growth of uh, these algae and other fungi on top of the water, which causes the organisms underneath it to suffocate and die. Which what are some solutions? Uh, you can use less chemical fertilizers in, uh, when we're farming and other agriculture activities. So, while we think about the World Cup and other big events in the world today, we should take a moment and think about eutrophication. Now, we're, over, we're going over to Dina Cola and Co. with our reporter, Robbie. Everyone, Robbie McLeon here alongside Jonathan, CEO and Chairman of Dina Cola and Co. I'm here today 
because I prepared a few questions I would like to ask Jonathan regarding his company and global warming. Are you ready, John? I sure am. First off, can you define global warming for me? Uh, uh no. Well, global warming is the uh, gradual increase in overall temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. Do you know? Do you know what causes global warming? No. The main cause of global warming is human emission of several greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane. Additionally, global warming is progressively getting worse due to the combustion of fossil fuels coming from factories at big shot corporations just like yours. I'm not saying what's so horrific about global warming. What's so horrific? Global warming creates longer and more frequent, frequent wildfires, intensive heat waves, severe droughts, and abrupt climate change. Not to mention that sea levels are on the rise and the ice caps are melting. Oh my heavens! There are certainly some pretty terrible things that my own company is causing. What can I do to decrease my global's, my company's carbon dioxide emission? Some possible solutions are utilizing renewable energy resources and, coming, and becoming less dependent on coal and other fossil fuels. Also, reducing overall emissions in the atmosphere would obviously be a big help. I will keep those in mind when I, when I think about what my company does. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I sure hope you do utilize those strategies. Thank you. Some biotic factors are <laughs> turtles, skunks, oaks, trees, and skunks. <laughs> this will be the truth. Uh, okay. Some biotic factors. <laughs> the woman behind all this, Miss Dina Cola. Yeah. Oh, you switch acting so much. I'm sorry. Pick one and stick with it. Crikey, it's a wild one. What would be fun? <laughs> Oh, we can do that. Can you guys Wait, but yeah. yeah, we can do that. Oh, Wait. Yeah, yeah. Tonight's top story, eutrophication in the Florida Short River System. But first, a message from Robbie. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Robbie! It's 1045. Do you know, do you know where you're It's actually rolling. I get nervous. It's 1045. Okay. <laughs> Biomass, trophic level, pyramid. That was a... That was yeah. so you got, no, you guys should make a pyramid. Yeah, Florida Short River community. Yep. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Now we're yeah. to the community. Yeah. Okay, wait. Oh, we told And we're here to discuss the Florida Shore River Community Feud. Food chain. So <laughs> just start. Do the old. Hurry, we have no time. Do the Come dance. on. Hurry up. That's not the time for this. Do the dance. No, I need. I need to start. Three. Now, somebody give me a little clap. Global warming. I can't do this. <laughs> is that it recycles water back into the organism to drink. Oh my! It seems like a hunter just shot a guard. Right here. <laughs> Bell. Cyan. World star. I just played that off so well. World star. It seems like a hunter just shot a guard. It's a hurricane. Yeah, it should probably be a gator, but... Oh, wait, an earthquake. Oh, yeah. Take two. Max, Max, uh, Crikey! Crikey! <laughs> Alright, sorry. Wait, Chris, are, are you Did you hit the button? Chris, sit up. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh... The, the, one of the most important cycles in life is the water cycle. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had the best re response I've ever yes. seen, and then I just... No, but, no, but, she no, can cut okay. this out. You, she can cut she her cut part this out. It makes it harder. Symbiotic. <laughs> oh, you no. Like it? How about no, you say it? Thanks for watching, and stay classy. And we're done. Ecology! <laughs>